Welcome to the Next Level Live. I'm Vivian Vial, and I'm your host today. Today, we're going to be doing a training on Zoom and field sales, and I'm going to be giving you guys some pointers on how to incorporate my hybrid system into your schedule so you can optimize your production and lifestyle. A little bit of background about me. My husband, Adriano D'Andrea, and I are senior vice presidents with FFL Aria. We started with FFL about 12 months ago, but we really started working about, I think it was last February after getting out of bed rest because of my pregnancy. I ran the field until a week before my son was born. And, and then I was back in the field about three weeks after my son was born. I come from a practice company where I was able to do 100% Zoom sales and I was the number one agent using that system. So I actually started in, 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 the, in the industry with field sales. I did about two weeks and I had to figure it out <laughs> because there was no other option at that point. So um, I had to pivot to Zoom and because the entire country was shut down, uh, basically I had to figure out a way to make it work. So I created a system that works. And back then, as a brand new agent, I was doing, um, so, you know, it's possible. It's not easy, but it's possible. So I personally don't love Zoom, to be honest with you guys. I truly love and appreciate the human interactions and the relationships that comes with field work, you know, with seeing people and in creating those relationships. But what happened was, is that I found myself in a situation where I would go out there in the field, but my head was here home because I had a, a newborn baby. So uh, I decided that I wanted to put together this hybrid system where now, you know, when I can, I'm going out there two days a week and uh, the rest of the week I'm working Zoom. And sometimes I just straight up do Zoom. So, you know, you have the option to do whatever works best for you. And that's where we're going to be giving you guys a really cool training here today to be able to utilize that. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my secrets. And I have here with me my dear friend and upline Isaiah Tatami and his beautiful girlfriend, Carolina. And they are going to actually be my clients today. They're going to be role playing with me. And uh, I'm going to show you guys exactly what I do in the home. And hopefully you can implement, um, you know, some of these tips right away and take your business to the next level. Isaiah, Carolina, thank you so much for being my clients today. Absolutely. Of course. Thanks for having us on. We're excited. Awesome sauce. All righty. So let's get this going. So here's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go through the very essential things you really need to know when it comes to doing Zoom and field sales. And if you want to do a half half system like what I'm doing right now, a hybrid system, there are very specific things you need to keep in mind. So let's take a look at some of those things. So hold on. Here we go. Okay. The first thing is expectations. I'm going to stop the share for a little bit. If you try doing quick sets for Zoom appointments, they're not going to show guys you, you like you, you can't just show up at their house you know if you just do a regular set and say hey yeah i'm gonna see you then they're gonna forget about it the reality is life is busy and meeting with an insurance agent about mortgage protection life insurance and final expenses is not people's priorities it's sad but it's just not so you need to be able to have a hook when it comes to booking that appointment where it's going to make them be, oh my God, yes, that crazy lady, the, the, the little Brazilian one with the accent. Yes. Yeah. I have an appointment with her. And again, I have my whole thing set up on Calendly. So whenever I book them, they are going to receive a text message with my information, a Zoom link. About an hour before the meeting, they're going to receive a reminder by email and a text message reminder. And five minutes before the meeting, they're going to receive another email with all of that. You know, an email and a text message with a reminder, the link, 
and say, I'm looking forward to meeting you. And the reason we do that is because, again, I can't just show up at their house. They're busy. They forget. And then a lot of times they still forget. So whenever I, you know, I get to that meeting, what I'm going to do is I'll call them, say, hey, Isaiah, hi, it's Vivian. I'm here on Zoom waiting for you. Are you having some issue getting in, some issues getting in? They're like, oh, oh, yeah, hold on. I'm going to get on my phone. And then they hop in. So sometimes, like yesterday, I had an appointment that, you know, I called the guy about four times at the time of the appointment. He didn't answer. And then about 20 minutes later, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was in the shower. Can we hop in now? Yeah, great. So I hopped in. And then, you know, I was, uh, you know, it's, it takes a little bit of, you know, creativity, but you want to make sure that you do lock down. Do not do quick sets. It's not going to work. People are not going to show. Make sure they like you. Make sure they laugh with you. And that's the, the trick. If you can get them to show when it comes to Zoom appointments, I mean, there's not much difference, you know, when you're sitting with them and you're helping them out, you know, it's just, it's just making sure that they are there. That's it. Now, we're going to go into our in-home um, and I'm going to share my screen real quick again. And we're going to go into a few things that you need to know. So my in-home presentation when it comes to Zoom and my in-home presentation when it comes to, you know, how are you? I'm doing great. It's great meeting you guys. Well, I'm going a little bit cool, cool already because it's 7.45 p.m. I've been doing this since 8 o'clock in the morning. So if you know, you know, I, I start speaking Portuguese or something, you know, like never, never mind. Okay. I have a three month old baby and I'm overworked. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay. So I'm going to explain to you guys real quick what it is that I do and how I do it. If you guys have any questions, please do let me know, okay? Okay. So I am what they call a field underwriter. Basically, what that means is that for the insurance carriers, I'm like their eyes and ears because it's my job to verify that you are who you say you are, um, that you're not attached to a 500-pound oxygen tank. And once I do that, it flips. I become the person that gets to work for you guys. So my job is to find you the best coverage you're going to qualify for, for the least amount of money. And to do that, I'm going to ask you guys a few questions. I'm going to ask you some health questions so I know what you qualify for. And I'm going to ask you some financial questions to know if you even need mortgage protection. Because believe it or not, I do meet people on a regular basis that don't. And if that's the case, I'll just let you guys know. I'll tell you, you know, Isaiah, Carolina, put your money somewhere else. What I find the most often though, is that the majority of the people I meet, they need less than what they think they do. So that's where I come in. I ask some questions, I figure that out and I can give you guys my best intelligent, smart advice, okay? Once we figure that out, I'll pull a few different options for you guys and your job is to pick the option that fits comfortably within your budget. And I can't stress this enough. Okay, mortgage protection is not a nice car, it's not a nice TV, but you do get to pay for it every month. So we want to make sure that it's comfortable. We want to make sure that, you know, it's not going to be a big deal for you to keep long term. Once you pick that option, all I can do for you guys is help you fill out an application. Uh, and what I mean by that is I don't make any decisions. I'm not the insurance carrier. I'm just the lady with the paperwork. I'll help you fill out an application. For, to request coverage, we're gonna send it out to the insurance carriers. It's gonna take them anywhere from three days to 15 business days to decide if they're gonna give you the coverage or not. If they do, they're gonna mail the policy directly to you. At that point, you can give me a call. We can hop on Zoom again, or you know, I can stop by because I live right here in Miami Days as well. And we can review everything together. If you guys wanna make any changes at that time, I can help you make them. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds, sounds good. good. Awesome, awesome. All right, so um, let's do this. I'm going to um, I'm gonna share my screen with you guys real quick. Hold on one second. I'm gonna share my screen real quick. 
And we're going to go over a few things just so you know who I am. And I want to make sure that you're taking some print screens of what I'm showing you because you're going to be sharing your private information with me. I want to make sure that you have my private information as well. Okay, so uh, here you see right here in the bottom, this is my national producer number. If you want to look me up, you can go on NIPR.com. You can put that number and you're going to be able to pull all of the licenses I have throughout the, com the, the country, okay? Now, here you're going to be able to find my, my, my state license. I mean, I don't know if you know, but to be a field underwriter, you actually have to go to school to do this, you know? I mean, my dad wanted me to be a doctor, but I end up being an insurance underwriter. What are you going to do, right? <laughs> And uh, so here's my license. If you go into the Florida CFO website and you put that number, you can also pull all my information, including my address and everything. Here is my, my driver's license. So it, we don't live that far away. If you guys ever want to stop by, get some coffee. My husband's Italian. He makes the best food, and the best coffee in town. So just stop by, let me know. We're going to have it ready for you. Now we have my address and, you know, my private license picture don't tell anybody anyway and here's my here's my business card um so take a print screen because you're gonna need it anything ever happens to you guys you know your kids your mom your dad your anybody really you know if you're you're like my friend zach he has a babysitter and he's 26 years years old so you know you might as well just give this to your babysitter anything happens the babysitter can call me sounds good sounds good <laughs> Okay, there you go. It's actually not a babysitter, it's a nanny, but it's 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 a true story. Anyway, um, as I just said, we're going to be going through some of your health information, we're going to review your financial needs, and we're going to look at some options. And then after that, we're going to apply with the carrier directly. So let me stop my, my share, and we're going to look at, uh, I'm going to share again, but I'm going to share a different document now. Um, here, real quick, Isaiah and Carolina. Talk to me a little bit. Um, I mean, I know that you filled out this paper because you want to make sure that, you know, your family is all right. God forbid something happens to you. But what is what is the thing that concerns you the most? Like if you die, if you become disabled, if you have a critical illness, what's the, the main concern here? Um, well, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, we, we just got like a bunch of these in the mail. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys just kept sending them over and over. So I, I just figured I, I might as well at least just see what it is. Yeah, I know they do that. <laughs> they, they, they won't stop sending it over until you protect your family. They say, yeah, this is important because, you know, the banks don't want to have to be dealing with foreclosure. So that, that's why. But uh, so talk to me a little bit, um, Carolina. God forbid something happened and Isaiah didn't come home last night. How would that turn out for you? Wow, that's actually something I've never really thought about. You know, we're still so young, um, but I'd probably have to move back home to Utah with my mom and um, our two kids. You have two kids. Oh God, yeah, you don't, you don't want to do that. Do you want your kids to go live with, with grandma, Isaiah? Definitely not grandma. No way. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not good. Yeah, now how about the other way around? God forbid something happened and Carolina didn't come home last night. How would that turn out for you, Isaiah? Um, I think I could manage a little bit. Um, I would definitely have to change up my lifestyle a little bit, though. But I, I don't think I'd have to sell the house. Okay, so you'll be able to manage a little bit. Okay, and how about if nothing happened to you guys, you know, like you're still alive, but God forbid you diagnosed with like a stage four cancer and, uh, you know, you can't work now because you're battling cancer and you're going through radiation and chemo and, and all of that and lost your income. How, how would that work? Like my income or, or her income? Your or income. Your income, Isaiah. It'd probably be the same scenario. I mean, we, we wouldn't be able to afford the house without my income. So, so in, that, in that situation, you would both and the kids move back to Carolina's mom's house? Yeah, I guess, I guess we're all going to grandma's house. Yeah. 
Okay, well, that's not good. Let's make sure that we find a solution here that nobody's moving back to, to mama's to, 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 to grandma's house, okay? Okay, so let me go back here. Let's go through some of the, this information that we, we, we talked about. So we said that we have a $250,000 mortgage, right? And it's a 30-year mortgage, correct? Correct. Okay, and you have a house value of about $350,000, so about $100,000 of equity, is that right? Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. Congratulations, guys. I know that the market's going crazy right now. You're paying about 2,500 bucks a month? Yeah. Okay. And then you're both 27. What do you do for a living, Isaiah? I'm a manager. Okay. And uh, how about you, Carolina? I teach dance. Dance teacher. Oh, Isaiah, look at that. You got the prettiest dance teacher in town. Lucky, lucky. I like it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I pulled this off. <laughs> oh, she's beautiful, man. You, you're good. <laughs> what's, your, what's your income like, Isaiah? Uh, about 4,500 a month. 4,500. And what about Carolina? Uh, 2,500 a month. 2500 okay perfect and you mentioned that Caroline is not taking any medications and you're only, only taking our bureau correct for asthma yeah that's right okay uh okay sounds good um now just so i know if you guys have anything in place that you own yourself uh, you know it doesn't matter whatever you have with work it doesn't really matter here we want to know what is it that you have for life insurance is that you own yourself anything um, I mean, I, I do have a work one, but nothing just for myself, no. Okay. Now, we don't count the work policies, and the, and the reason is this. Work, work policies are great. A lot of times, they're free. Sometimes, they're, they're, they're cheap. But the only problem is that you have to die on the job. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. If, if you leave that job... You have nothing. And what I find is that a lot of people that I see, what happens is they count on that policy. And then next thing you know, they leave the job. They're 65 years old. They have no policies now. And it's extremely expensive for them to get insurance. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. And uh, okay. So anything else that you guys have that could act like life insurance? Do you have any 401ks? Do you have any IRAs, any bond stocks, any savings, anything like that? Uh, I have a 401k. It, we just started it though because I just barely got this job. So there's probably, I don't know, maybe like $3,000 in there. Okay, perfect. All right. I got what I needed here. I'm going to stop this share and then I'm going to share over here. We're going to go through your expenses real quick. We're going to do what I call the financial fire drill, just so I know if you need this. Because to be honest, some people don't and we're going to figure that out. Hold on. Um, share my screen, start broadcast. All right. Okay, so hold on, because I can't write for the life of me. All right, so Isaiah and Carolina. There we go. All right. So we have $250,000 of mortgage, about $100,000 of equity. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And we're paying $2,500 a month. That's right? That's right. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Whose money is this money? Um, the bank's. That's the bank's money, $250,000. That's your balance. The bank owns that money. Now, whose money is the $100,000? That's, that's ours, right? That's your money. That's correct. Now, if you don't pay the $2,500 that you need to pay every month, what happened to your money? Um, I, I don't know how that works, actually. Well, the house goes into foreclosure and the bank takes your equity. So you lose your money, right? So at the bare bones minimum, my goal here today is to make sure that we are protecting your money, which is the equity that you currently have in the house. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, so just so I know what you have for basic expenses. So you're spending $2,500 in mortgage. How about utilities when you put it all together? About? Uh, probably about 200 $200 in utilities. Uh, how about uh, car payments? Well, her car's paid off. Mine is like, I think mine is 430 430 Uh How about uh, car insurance? That's like, it's like 115 each for each of us. Okay, so 230 Okay, how about food per month? Oh, God. Um, we probably spend between both of us, like, I would say like 200 ish dollars a week. Okay, it's so about $800. Okay. Uh, do you have any school loans? No, no. Okay, so car insurance, car food, do you have an HOA? Yeah, um, that's $50 a month. $50, utilities, car. What about uh, um, uh, internet and cable? No cable, but our, our internet is, that's about 100 a month. Okay, what about cell phones? Yeah, uh, our family plan is uh, two forty a month. Okay, does that sound like what your basic expenses are? Just like basic of the basic. Does that sound right? Do you have do you have any landscaping that you do for the house? Pool pool guy or something like that? <laughs> that yeah, that's 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 about it right there. I say you better keep that pool guy away. You smart. Look at the beautiful wife that you got right there. Come on. <laughs> Cool guys in this house. Uh, 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 no cool guys over here. There we go. A smart guy. I like you right there. Okay. All right. So let's see what we have for your basic expenses. Let's see. Let's see. So we have 2500 200 430 $230, $800, $1,500, $240. So it's about forty-five fifty that we're spending for basic expenses, and your income is forty-five hundred plus twenty-five hundred, right? So you you basically uh, you basically making about seven thousand dollars a month together, right? Now, when we see what your monthly expenses are basic of course there's no going out to dinner there's no you know any luxuries anything in there but there's a big difference between the seven thousand dollars that you're bringing in together and that forty five hundred bucks a month are you putting anything away or are you just spending the difference in whatever comes up every month uh i would say i mean yeah it sure doesn't feel like we have that much left over but we try to save at least about 500 a month into our savings but you know things come up so random expenses but I, I would say yeah we put away at least 500 a month okay all right so remember when i told you i was going to tell you if you needed mortgage protection or not mm -hmm. this is what i'm going to do to find out so here's your world oh my god i'm so sorry hold on this is a really crooked world it's not working let me fix this world hold on here's your word Ooh, okay it's still crooked but it's better it looks like it looks like a head of a little kid in a cartoon but okay this is your world and uh um here's what we're gonna do uh, basically basically we're going to uh your world cost you about uh, 4550 but it's really costing you around you know 6500 bucks a month because you're spending everything that comes in right so that's your world i'm going to put your little babies over here they're part of your world oh look at that let me make them happy whoops there we go oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i made your babies they're so ugly should have fixed them <laughs> you fix these babies they're really ugly hold on okay here oops There's your babies. Oh, there we go. They're a little bit better now, but now I'm gonna make beautiful, I'm gonna make beautiful Carolina here. I'm gonna make her beautiful lush hair. Look at that beautiful hair, Carolina, look at that. Can I have some please? I had a baby, I'm losing all my hair right now. 
It's a disaster. Okay, so I'm gonna make Carolina happy. There you go. And then I'm gonna put some clothes on Carolina because it's inappropriate to be walking around naked, Carolina. Come on. Okay, that's not cool. There you go. Some clothes. You have like a weird leg, but I'm sorry. I'm gonna make the Isaiah here. Isaiah is a very tall guy. I put a little tiny little bit of hair on Isaiah. I'm gonna make him really happy. Look at that. Happy because he's married to Carolina. What kind of joke is that? He's a very happy man. Okay, so there's Isaiah. I'm sorry, Isaiah is so ugly, but you know, it's, it's me drawing, so I apologize. Anyway, um, okay, so I have both of you guys there, and now we're gonna look at what's gonna happen to you. God forbid something happens. I'm not gonna kill you, okay? Because you know, we really, really, truly don't need to die. But I'm gonna give you a horrible illness. You're fighting cancer now, and you can't work, okay? Now, Isaiah, you can bring $4,500 a month in now. How is that going to turn out for Carolina? Well, I mean, yeah, with, with our expenses, it's, it's not doable. So looks like grandma's house, we go. Why do you say that? Well, just with, you know, the expenses, she, she, she makes just as much as how much, you know, the mortgage is and I mean, anything after that is, I mean, it's not, it's not doable. Okay. So Carolina, if you had, you know, if you guys had to move out to grandma's house and you live in Florida right now, right? So you have to move to a different state. The kids need to leave school, go away from his little friends. How, how do you think that would impact your family? That would be very tough for myself. Um, and then obviously our kids, I wouldn't want to put them through that. Yeah, yeah. so that, that, that's, just, that's definitely something we don't want to do, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. okay, it gives me a better idea. All right, so I'm going to bring you back to healthiness, Isaiah. There you go, look at you, healthy, healthy as a horse. Now, just Carolina, you, you just what? You forgot to draw clothes on me. Oh, but it's okay because, you know, you, you, you were skinny. So you have clothes, you just can't see. You know, get it? <laughs> okay, so uh, Carolina, you know, she's like, she's South American. So you have to put some, you know, big dresses on her. So nobody's seeing the curves, you know. So that, yeah. that's why I put her like a big, a big you know, baggy dress. So nobody's seeing what's going on in there. Because, you know, otherwise the pool guy is going to come around. We don't want to, okay? That's right. Okay. So now let's uh, do the same with Caroline. I'm so sorry, Caroline. You're so pretty. I don't want to have to kill you or make you sick, but I'll bring you back again. Okay. So Carolina, we lost her income now because she's either sick or she's not here anymore. No, let's do that. I'm sorry, Caroline. I'm actually going to kill you. Oh, oh my God. I, I, what did I do? Hold on. Now I killed, I got rid of the whole world. That's not right. Hold on. World. I'm going to have to draw Caroline again. Oh, now you look like an alien. I'm so sorry. Okay, let me put a, a little little dress here on you. Blushy hair. Hold on, I need to fix this this thing over here. This is not good. Okay. <laughs> oh, it gets worse. It gets worse. I'm telling. You. Okay, here, Carolina, I got your blushy hair back. There we go. Now I'm gonna kill Carolina. Okay, Carolina is not here anymore. Carolina is gone. She didn't come home last night. Now it's you, Isaiah, and the babies. How would that turn out for you? Um, yeah, I mean, our expenses are $45.50, and I just I bring home only $4,500. So I'd probably have to pick up a second job, um, pay for a babysitter. It, it would be tragic for sure. It would be tragic because now we don't have mom that takes care of those babies and you're going to have to deal with grieving and you're going to have to find somebody else to take care of them. And you're going to, it's, it's, yeah, it would be really bad. And I don't know that, you know, if Carolina's mom just lost her daughter, if she's going to take you in. Yeah. Yeah. This, this would be really ugly for sure. 
Yeah, so what this is telling me, and you, you tell me if you agree, it tells me that we definitely need to put something in place because we want to make sure, God forbid, something happens. You know, and, and again, you don't need to die, right? Hold on, I need to bring Carolina back to life because this is not good. You know, I don't want to leave her sick out there, okay? And without an income, the income is back. Uh, God forbid something happens. We want to make sure that there is something in place to make sure that those kids are taken care of to make sure that you guys are taken care of. Uh, because, you know, we know that one out of three women in America, they get cancer in their lifetime. One out of two men in America get cancer in their lifetime. And, you know, if God forbid something happens, you don't want to put yourself and your family and your kids through all of that. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so yeah, we definitely need something in place. Now, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna stop this share. We have an idea. I'm gonna share my screen over here on my computer real quick. And we're gonna go through uh, some of what mortgage protection is uh, right here. Uh, just so you understand, I don't just do mortgage protection. I do everything related to life insurance, insurance uh, final expense, uh, barrier expense, annuities. Um, and all of that. We're going to be taking care of your mortgage protection today, but if you need anything else, you know, you can always reach out to me. Um, now, a few different options that I'm going to be showing you guys. The first one is going to be a full mortgage payoff. Basically, God forbid something happens to you, the $250,000 in your balance and your mortgage is paid off. Uh, if it happens today, it's paid off. If it happens in 25 years from now, you will receive $250,000. You're going to pay off the mortgage and you put the rest of the money on your pockets because the coverage is level. It never goes up or down for the whole period of the time. Uh, so it's a little bit harder to qualify for mortgage payoff, but you guys are young and healthy. So, you know, we have a pretty good shot. Um, if the full mortgage payoff is a little bit too much, what are we going to do is we're going to go for a half mortgage payoff. And then sometimes we can kind of like add an extra, the extra half in an accidental death. And what that means, we're super protecting the full mortgage. And the last option is what we usually do for people they're a little bit older but you know if the first two options don't fit your budget we can always go there which is basically covering a certain amount of months of payments for that uh mortgage and basically you know we would be giving caroline a little bit of time to put the house in the market make sure that she had a little bit of time to grieve um, so she can take that $100,000 um, equity that she currently has in the house so she can roll that over into possibly like a paid up, you know, a paid condo or something like that. And at the, at the end of the day, we're keeping what we want to do in the first place, which is keeping a roof over her head and the kids' heads. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, awesome. And then uh, what I'm gonna be showing you guys is level. So the price never goes up, never goes down. Okay, it's not a decreasing term. I'm gonna be showing you a few different options. So we have, we can do 10, 15, 20, you know, 30 years. Um, and what I'm showing you also comes with critical illness. Uh, if you have a heart attack, cancer, stroke, anything critical, it pays out 100%. If you have any type of chronic illness, it pays out 100%. And if you have any type of terminal illness, illness it will pay out 100% as well. Now, uh, real quick, Isaiah and Carolina, um, there is really only three reasons people are going to tell me they need to think about this after everything that we just went through. Um, and basically, the first one is just because I did a really poor job explaining to you what it is that... Um, this protection can do for you. And if that's the case, please just let me know. I'm happy to go back and explain it again, okay? The second one is gonna be because they just don't care. You know, Isaiah, you don't care that your wife's gonna have to go back to mom's house. You don't care that your kids are gonna, gonna have to change schools. You don't care that their life are gonna be tragically changed. And if that's the case, just tell me now, there's no point for me to show you your numbers because if it's $5 or $5,000, it's not going to matter to you. Okay. Is that the case? No, I care. 
Yes, no. Okay, good. And the third option is just because it's unaffordable. And if that's the case, I truly don't care if it's $5 or $5,000. To me, it does not matter. All I care is to help you guys put something in place that's going to make sure that your family is never going to have to hurt in case, God forbid, something happens that you're not expecting, right? So if it's unaffordable, all you need to do is say, Vivian, I like this, but let's look at some other options. I'm happy to go there and, and pull some different options out and find something that makes sense for your budget does that make sense and and I'll tell you why I am telling you this is because I'm actually I'm 34 years old now and uh and it's the reason I'm in this business in the in the first place um I'm 34 I bought my first house I was 22 years old and um you know my ex-husband is a glass sculptor and what happened was one day he was sculpting a piece of glass the piece of glass flew out of the ground, grinding wheel, hit him in the face. He had to go to the hospital. He, they had to do surgery. When he woke up, he was blind in one eye. And one day we were making multiple six figure, you know, salary. And the next day we were making zero. We had to let go 16 of our employees. He spent six weeks at the UCLA hospital fighting to get his eyesight back doing hyperbaric chamber therapy. Do you know what the hyperbaric chamber therapy is? No, I've never heard of that. It's, it's, uh, it's a very alternative type of therapy created by NASA. Uh, it's, a, it's an oxygen chamber. And uh, it's, it's pretty amazing, but it's, it's not covered by insurance. And basically... It cost 2,500 bucks each and they were doing four a day for six weeks. At the end of those six weeks, we were bankrupt. And um, he didn't die, I didn't die, but we couldn't pay for the mortgage. We couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't pay for anything really. At, at that point, I called my real estate agent and she's like my mom, right? So I call her and say, no, no, we have to put this house in the market. We need to sell this house now. Otherwise I'm going to lose it. And she said, Vivian, you put $150,000 of improvements into this house. It's going to take a certain buyer. It's going to take a while to sell it, to find that buyer. And I said, then I'm going to lose the house. And uh, she said, what about your mortgage protection? So what, what, what do you mean mortgage protection? I don't have mortgage protection. I have PMI. I even called the bank to ask them about it. And she said, you have mortgage protection. When you bought the house, I sent my mortgage protection guy to get your signatures because you were so retarded. You wouldn't sit down with the guy to do an application. And I paid for the first year. You have it. Unless you stopped paying for it, you have it. Go in your safe, see if you can find the policy. And if you can, call me, I'll call him. What do you guys think I found in my safe? The policy? A policy I didn't even know I had. And that policy saved my $700,000 home. It paid for my mortgage for two years while my ex-husband was disabled. Then we went to look into the life insurance policy that we only had because, you know, we got an investment in the prop into the company and the investors made us take a life insurance policy and they had a dismemberment rider, which gave us $250,000. And with that policy, we were able to bring all of our employees back and now my ex-husband was able to train them to keep the business going. I would have never gotten the mortgage protection policy. I was 20, you know, five years old and stupid. You know, I would have never thought I needed it. The only reason I had is because somebody else got it for me. And without it, I would have lost everything. So it's personal for me. And I want to make sure that, you know, we, we make sure that those kids don't have to go back to grandma's house. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. Awesome. So let's look at these options real quick. Let's find the one and let's get these applications in. Um, okay. So, um, all right. So I actually pulled a little bit more than what you guys um, have on the mortgage. So we're looking at the mortgage uh, payoff and a little bit more. It's basically um, 30 years and 15 years for Isaiah. So it's going to be $130 for Isaiah for 30 years and $95 for 15 years. Uh, for Carolina, Carolina, it's going to be 30 years, $230, and uh, 15 years is going to be $130. Uh, $30. For the half mortgage, um, 
it's going to be 30 years going to be 85 for Isaiah and 15 years going to be 52 for Carolina 30 years going to be 92 dollars and 15 years going to be 62 and I'm not even going to go into that equity perfection just yet let's see if we can work this out because I, I feel like it's really important for you guys for us to to get something significant in place um out of these options that I, I'm giving you we, I can't even get you guys in today, but if we could, which one would be the one that most likely would fit the budget um, um, comfortably? I don't know. I think maybe the middle option, option number two, looks the best to me. You want to do 30 years or 15 years? 30? I say 30. Vivian, can we start? Can we upgrade this later? Yes, absolutely. We can start it. And then, you know, within 30 days, we can look at the policies, review it. And then if you guys decide that you want to go up, you know, to the full mortgage, we can absolutely do that. Not a problem. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's, this is just the application though, right? That's the application. We're gonna put it in. We're gonna see if we get we, we get it approved, and then they're gonna issue the policy. They will charge you for the first premium, however, because we want to make sure. God forbid something happens to you tonight, you're covered, Isaiah. You know, I'm not gonna leave here and say, "Oh, I just went through all of this. I know you need it," and leave you, you know, uninsured. So we want to make sure that coverage is in place tonight. So they're gonna charge you for the first premium once the policy is approved, and then you have 30 days to decide what you want to do. You want to go up, you want to go down, you want to cancel, whatever you want to do with it. But we want to make sure that protection is in place tonight. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do option two, the the 30 year. Okay, awesome. So um, we're going to put, put in the application right now. It's going to take me about 15 minutes. What I need you to do is I need you to send me a text message. You have my number. Um, if you can please send me a picture of front and back of both of your IDs. And if you have a paper check, just write void on it and send me a picture as well. That's it. We're going to put in the application 15 minutes. We are done. And I know you guys are going to miss me, but it's okay. You can also call me. You can, you have my address now. You can come to have coffee in my house with my, you know, with my hot Italian husband. No problem. No problem. You know, you have a hot Argentinian wife. I have a hot Italian husband. It all works, I say. It all works. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. So that's it, guys. Then here, we're going to basically go ahead and write the application. And then at the end, I said, I'm going to let me, let me lock down this sale. So, and that's what I usually always say, guys. So Isaiah, Caroline, the applications are in. I'm going to give you a call back as soon as I get the approval. By the way, I don't tell anybody if it's approved yet. I want to make sure that, you know, I get the policy issued first. And then once it's issued, I call them and let them know it's issued and ready and, and on the, the way to them. Uh, and then I say, so Isaiah, Carolina, do you remember how many of these papers you got in the mail? Yeah, it was just like nonstop. Okay, just so you know, it's not over, okay? You're probably going to be getting these papers for like nine months because you just bought the house, okay? So what I need you to make sure every time you look at that paper, you think, if I fill out this paper, Vivian's going to come in here because she has my address now, and she's going to start screaming in Portuguese, okay? So do not fill out those papers, Isaiah. Do not, because I'll tell you, if you do, you're going to get like a bunch of telemarketers calling you nonstop, a bunch of sales agents a bunch of underwriters probably me people in my office i don't even, you know what's happening so don't fill out those papers anymore now for the stuff that you already filled out make sure that anybody call you about mortgage protection tell them it's already taken care of if for some reason they tell you they need to review your policy your policy is up for review the policy was flagged tell them vivian told me it's all a lie stop calling me because it's all a lie they're just trying to get your home in your home to sell you some other policies and you don't want to buy anything else if you want to buy something you know what you need to do right Call you, right? You call me, exactly. I'll take care of that for you. So if they start pushing you, 
what you're going to do is you're going to give them my phone number, tell them to call me and I'll deal with them. And if they keep pushing you, just call me, put my cell phone. You have my cards, put my cell phone on your, on your phone, do a three way call. And I, I will start speaking Portuguese with them and tell them to knock it off and they're knock it off because they're just going to do it. Cause you know, I'm annoying like that. Sounds good. I'll take care of, of you guys for you. Okay. Thank you, Vivian. Yeah, well, it was great speaking with you guys and helping you guys tonight. You need anything, I mean it, you know, jokes support, give me a call. And as soon as I get that approval, I will let you know, okay? Okay, thank that's you. Good. We'll wait for your phone call. So that's it, guys. I lock it down. I make it funny. I make it fun. Um, you know, I make them feel like I'm human because that's what I am. My husband sometimes say I'm not that human, but, you know, I am kind of human. So that's the key to be able to make people feel like you are right there sitting with them in their living room. They are comfortable with you. They trust you. You know, I have my mom in one side. I have my son in the other side because I work too much. I haven't had time to print pictures with my newborn and, and my husband just yet. I have to put some new pictures over here. Uh, you know, I have, you know, my family around me and they like that and they trust that because this is what this business is about. It's about helping people. So that's it. You know, you just, you, and you help them out. Um, the key is, Lock down your appointments on the phone, create some report when you're doing your Zoom meetings, forget that you are on the computer, do what's best for your clients and care. If you care enough, it does not matter if you are in the field or if you are on Zoom or if you are on the telephone, you're going to be able to do what's best for your clients and everybody wins. So have an incredible weekend. I hope this really hope, I hope this really helped. See, there, there you go, Brazilian English. And um, if you need anything, reach out and go out there. Let's help some family and let's really, really take our business to the next level. Bye. Thank you so much for joining.